So by now, you guys are probably sick and tired of hearing me talk about how to write the narrative, how to rewire your thinking, live intentionally. I say these things all the time, but then you might ask, how the hell do I do it, right? Sounds good in theory, sounds cool, sounds positive, but how the heck do I do this, right? Well, it's actually a little easier than you think. Uh, you just have to be really intentional about it. So on this video, I'm gonna tell you four ways to get started with the process of living intentionally to create the life that you love, okay? And the thing about these tricks is they're so easy that most of us make excuses not to do them. But if you can implement these tricks that I'm about to share with you in your daily life, there's no way your life's not gonna change. There's just no way. Because most of us live by default. And so what that means is we are victims of our circumstances. And we might not even know that we're victims of our circumstances, but we're so used to living in default that we don't know how to take the reins and live intentionally. So here are four tricks to get you started in that direction. The first one requires probably a little bit of meditation, especially if you're not used to this, but we first have to become the, the observer of our thoughts. We really have to have the ability to recognize when, say, we get upset, we react, we feel a certain way. We have to be able to recognize that that is not us. Like that's not our natural state of being. If you're upset or something ticks you off, that is a perfect opportunity to practice being the observer of what's going on. And so what that means is instead of allowing yourself to get carried away in these, these thinking patterns, you just sit and just watch it like it's, a, like it's a movie theater production. So you know how when you go to a movie, especially a drama, you sit back and you can relate to it. Like you can feel the emotions, you can see how all of it's going down, but you recognize that you're the observer. You're not caught up in it. And so it's the same thing when that happens in us. When those things come up in us, those emotions, the discomfort, recognize that that is not your core essence. So we actually have the ability, rather we've practiced it or not, to stand back and watch these feelings happen. You will get to a point, if you practice this long enough, where you will be able to hear your thoughts. Like you'll be able to very distinctively know what you're thinking, what's coming up for you. But the thing is, we really have to practice this. And so one way to do that is through meditation. So that's just quieting your mind, and if we're not used to meditation, a lot of us think that, you know, we have to light candles, circle up, kumbaya, but it's really not like that. It's not. Um, meditation can be something as simple as sitting still, maybe closing your eyes and just breathing for five breaths, but putting your intentional focus solely on those breaths. Anything that takes thought away, that gets you solely focused on one thing, is a form of mindfulness and can be a, a meditation practice. So just keep that in mind moving forward. Busy moms, if you're washing the dishes, do this. Try not to wash the dishes, talk and feed the baby, look at something on the TV. Get rid of all of that. Just wash the dishes. Just wash the dishes. Yes, your child might come and interrupt you in a few minutes, but that's okay. Just get your mind back. That's actually a really good practice. If you can take your thoughts back to what you're doing after being distracted, that's a great practice for meditation because it's going to happen regardless if we have actual um, distractions or not. You know, we're going to have thoughts that come up that throw us off of our meditation. So the trick is to be able to focus solely on one thing that's going to quiet our minds long enough to be able to separate our true essence from the world and the thoughts and the feelings and everything else jumping out at us, because that's not us. That's just our brain using symbols, using memory to protect us from future events. So step one, become the observer. And once you do this, you'll be able to recognize thoughts that come up that aren't serving you anymore. For me personally, the thought that came up over and over when I first started practicing this is, gosh, I feel bad. That's like how I prefaced a lot of my thoughts. I would say, I feel so bad because, I feel so bad because I don't have time to spend with my son. I feel so bad because I got behind on work. I feel so bad because fill in the blank. And I realized that was a narrative that I was telling myself hundreds of times a day is I feel bad. 
I feel bad. And even if you can just say that for like five minutes over and over, sorry, five times, you can feel it in your body how it drags you down. So I was walking around with that without even knowing it. I wouldn't have known that if I didn't learn how to become the observer. So step one, become the observer. Once you do this and you start to really recognize the faulty thinking patterns, then you step into being able to reprogram. And that's the really cool part. And it gets a little cheesy too. So you guys might not believe in affirmations or you might, but something that really empowers affirmations is if we use them. So making like a list once a year where we're like, you know, I am healthy, I am happy. That's not gonna do shit. Like I'm just being real with you. What's gonna happen and what's really gonna make a change is if you do this consistently. And they have to be specific. You can't just say, I'm happy, I'm beautiful. That, that's nice and that's, that raises your vibration so you probably feel better in your day. But let's get specific here. Like if we wanna really get in here and rewire the way that we're thinking about ourselves and about the world around us, we have to target those beliefs that aren't serving us anymore. So for instance, me. I feel bad because I am bad because I had to get in there and rewire. So I had to start, once I recognized I was doing that, telling myself something different. So I would start saying, I am an amazing mom. I am a really hard worker. I am very responsible. Big one for me, I am organized. Y'all, I'm not organized. I'm like the biggest type B I know. But I've told myself that enough that I'm a damn good faker at this point. Like I, some days I'm convinced I'm very organized and I'm not, but I'm working on it and it's getting better because I changed the story. So we have the power, you guys, we have the power to change the narrative. We just have to do it. So find what faulty beliefs you're telling yourself over and over and then rewire them, reprogram them with the beliefs that you want. And that's the powerful part, you guys. We can believe anything we want, but it does take practice. So become the observer. Step two, put positive affirmations into our brains. So we have to tell ourselves these things over and over and we won't believe them at first. They won't feel natural at first, but once we tell ourselves enough, we will believe differently. Beliefs are all beliefs are our thoughts that we tell ourselves over and over and over again. Again, beliefs are what we tell ourselves over and over and over again. So if we want to change our beliefs, we have to start telling ourselves something different. So do it. Do the work. I don't feel bad for you. If you're in pain and you're not doing the work, I don't feel bad for you. You got to do the work and you deserve it, you guys. So step three, and this goes along with reprogramming with those positive affirmations. There is power in pretending. It's okay to pretend. You guys, if I didn't pretend, I would be exactly who I was five years ago. Every situation I was in that I felt uncomfortable, I had imposter syndrome, I kind of felt like I shouldn't be there, I wasn't qualified, I knew it was time for me to level up because I knew that's where I wanted to be. So what I started doing is pretending that I felt comfortable. There is no way in hell, you guys, when I first started coaching and telling people what to do, I didn't feel confident doing that. As sure as I did not feel confident getting on a Zoom and talking for an hour and telling people, you know, how to live their lives, that wasn't very comfortable, but I pretended it was. I pretended it was. And, you know, there's been times as a parent where I haven't felt like a very good mom. I lose my patience, I lose my shit, and it's hard, it's really, really hard. But if I pretend for long enough that I'm patient and I pretend that I'm a super involved mom, what's gonna happen over time? That's gonna be me. Anytime we pretend something for long enough, we get to a point where we don't know the difference anymore. We don't feel like it's pretending, it's just our state of being. So, number three, there is power in pretending, okay? And number four, oh, what was number four? Now that we've gotten this far. I drew a blank. I remember, that's one thing you guys will realize about me is when I make these videos, I don't use notes. I just kind of wrap and throw it off because it's coming from my heart. And my brain does this really cool thing where it helps me forget 
And usually that happens because it's trying to block something out and protect me, but it doesn't always recognize when it needs to and when it doesn't. So anyway, moving right along. So number four, if you are not yet walking in the shoes that you want to be walking in, if you find that you look outside of yourself a lot and you admire people around you or you want what they have or you wish you were different, let me tell you something. You can be whoever you want to be. You can embody the essence of whoever you want to. So fourth thing, do everything. Do everything in alignment with what your future self wants. Everything. Search your heart. Give yourself space in your life to know where you want to be in a year and stop putting limits on yourself. You can be anywhere, anywhere. Just when you think you've thought too big, think bigger. You can be anywhere. So what you need to do is pretend or make decisions in a way that align with who that future person is. She or he is already there. They already exist. They're just in the future. So you haven't met with them yet, right? Take the linear concept of time out, okay? You're all there together. Your past self, your present self, your future self. Thank your past self for what it's done. It's really helped you a lot. It's kept you alive. Thank your present self for setting this intention and respect your future self for knowing what's best for you. Do everything in alignment with your future self and watch how powerful your life becomes. Hope this helped you guys. Do it. Four steps. Get started. I love you guys.